Yeah, we're on the final stretch now. The rooster stretch, as you can see. Dried it all. It's already, it, it, while it was actually drying as well, you know, I had this amazing insight. Well, it's not an insight, it's just another idea because the reds aren't really popping out as much as I want them to. I'm just putting in a little bit of dark red there again. I can see certain areas, but it doesn't matter. I'm not going to go near that again. But um, this is what happens when you're painting. It's like meditating. You're, you're transcending. And this idea, to, no, that's not bright enough. I want these to pop out more. So that's cadmium red medium, okay? So before we go any further, I, I put out a little bit of cadmium red light, okay? And I think that's going to give us the lift we need. Well, not us, but the roosters. I'll show you now against against the, uh, the cadmium red deep. Cadmium red medium was just a bit too similar because of all these colors. I'll, I'll just show, put down a few and you'll see the difference. Now, can you see? Okay, and I'll do it quickly just to show you. We're gonna do them all. So you'll amend that. You know, th there's an extra color. Well, an extra two colors you have to add to your list. Cadmium red light. And the, where are we? You have it here, look show you and the brilliant blue the brilliant blue as well as the cadmium cadmium red light okay so they're the two covers that we add but I mean this happens this is a wonderful thing about painting these ideas you know come to you as you as you move along as you progress it's it's a, it's a journey of learning it's a journey of celebration and uh, one never knows really what's going to happen along the way and more so when you're doing abstract paintings. Like this painting now is a request for Margaret, and uh, which I'm really happy to do because I, I always love this painting. I loved it so much that I got the greeting cards made of it as well. And, and they, they're one of the most popular cards. Well, with, I have two somewhere there. There's two roosters in that one. But this one I decided to go for three. I always make them different. Every rooster painting I do is different, okay? That's the wonder of creation, creative arts, you know. Now, do you see the way that's standing out much better? Can you see that? I just wanted to show you that first. It's a little above the cadmium red medium, and that's why it really pops on the deep red, okay? So that was just on my mind as I was building up textures and doing other things, and I said, no, I'm going to change and show you how to do it. Okay, so we have that. Next, we're going to go on to our lines, the delineations, because we want to get those in. And by the way, Margaret, I'll probably do uh, the abstract next, because I'm looking forward to that as well. We'll do one of my abstracts, which are quite difficult, but I'll show you the rudimentaries of it. But anyway, let's get back to the three funky roosters. And look what I have down here. I have my cadmium, sorry, I have my cobalt, so much cadmium around. I have my cobalt blue, okay? Which is the base color. But this is the cobalt blue heavy bodied paint, okay? It's the heavy bodied. I, I use, as you know, we use the basics, you know, which are very, in, quite inexpensive for the base colors. But then when we want to go on to heavy bodied, you know, acrylics, they're more expensive. But that's the price you have to pay. You want to be an artist, you know? I mean, years ago we used to use poster paints at school. I used to love painting at school, but after a couple of weeks hanging in the wind, you suddenly see it crack and boom, all the paint would fall off. I don't understand why they do that to kids even at school. You know, when I go in and do school projects, I bring in these, I bring in my Liquitex paints. Show them, you know, that these are permanent. You can have these. These will last a lifetime, you know, or more. Okay, so we're going to start with the cobalt blues. Got a bit distracted there. And we're just going to follow our lines. First of all, we're going to start with the red areas and the beaks because we want the beaks to stand out in front they're not behind their faces and the beaks are in front of each other okay then we do the lines of the bodies so okay let's do this first of all and we're using the edge of the brush just to show you the difference you know the way we do this I've shown you before this is the flat of the brush okay which is a really broad line but we're gonna twist sorry can you see that that's the flat of the brush look really blah broad line but we're going to twist our brush around and use the edge so no to get a thinner line okay can you see that grand simple but effective okay the edge is coming around like this i'm doing the center guy first anyway because he's the biggest so he'd be annoyed if we didn't do him first you see what i'm doing i'm just following the line that's already there look 
the line is there for us because why because we left a trail you know we left a trail to follow and this line as well will need to be reinforced um, because the blue itself will be a bit transparent first coat even in the areas where the blue is it's grand but can you see can you see it now oh wow it's not fantastic Look. okay we're doing all the little points there get around around and then right around here leaning on that brush leaning on it you know there's no need to uh, do a gentle stroke with this and you're going to separate it you're going to separate it from the beak okay to give another little section like that and you can see already because the yellow is coming through but don't worry we're going to go over that again and then it's going to link up with the lovely curve there all the way down to the orange where's you know it's coming through there as well but we want, I just want to get this in first just to show you because this is important because this has to go right out in front of the other guy's headdress right out there and it meets up at that point okay now we do this fella here because he's right beside him okay and same idea we're going to cut down through the beak through the beak okay in there like that bring a lovely big curve around here lovely big curve around there going all the way around okay back down here again all the way around in there again and in there again and don't worry that this will be reinforced again and you're staying away from his beak because his beak is in front of this guy's Head, okay so we're just going we're doing it fairly quickly you can take your time doing it okay all the way around all the way around cutting right in there into the back of the neck linking up with that and then again the orange will come through again but don't worry you're gonna go over that when it comes to it and then you're gonna have your little beak here coming out again out there Oh, I've put too much on the brush there. Sometimes that can happen. And if you don't have a square flat, you know, do use your round brush. Use your don't. Uh, these are my tools that I use. Okay. But if you don't have them, don't worry. Now we're going to do the same here. Delineate his his headdress first because he's in front of the background. The background will be last. Okay. Because the fe tail feathers are behind. So that's what we're saying. Don't worry about that. And the same the red is coming through a tiny bit but don't worry because we're going to go through that again so do you like this style yeah it's stylized um okay just have to get around there couldn't see that there now coming around here uh, people think it looks like stained glass you know in fact a few stained glass artists asked me to collaborate with them didn't get a chance yet but I will at some stage but I, I love coming up with the ideas trying to simplify and compose the composition of something in this style because it's challenging you know okay uh, around like this right down here doing the curve down there as well okay Whoa. And don't forget you're going to have to go over these because there is a bit of transparency in this cobalt blue coming down there yep coming all, all the way around all the way through there and then we have to get in beaky because the beak is in front of everything beak right out there I just wanted to show you that this is the the order in which you do it you don't start doing the background you have to delineate the objects and the motifs in the foreground because they're going to stand out now can you see the way it's coming together good now we'll go for his his line his outline okay and we're going to bring it down here still using the edge of the brush and he's just meets up with his with his beak okay and then the same here meets up just a little bit thicker there tiny bit thicker because the line might thicken as it comes down to the foreground and then just a little line there just to show yeah there i am that's that's my chest the big guy is saying 
and then we want these lovely V's and W's. I'm doing it wider down here. I'm doing. I'm onto the flat of the brush now because we're getting up closer to the foreground. And you know, it just it thickens the line in the foreground, gives a bit, a slight bit of depth, just an illusion, you know. Again. Okay, we're going to do the same here. Coming out there a bit thicker for him. Yeah, and this is going to be reinforced as well because you can see we're sort of on both sides. We're going over some of the cobalt blue underneath, but also going over the deep cadmium red, which comes through a tiny bit. And you can let it come through if you want. That, that's another effect. But if you want to get a good delineation, strong delineation, just go over it again with cobalt blue. That's all you have to do. It's as easy as that, you know. And uh, no one's going to berate you if you don't go over it again because some people like like the different tones of blue. I personally really like to go over it again because I want it to jump out. I want it to be so vibrant. And the secret with these mantle or whatever is to have a few in the front, have them a little, little bit deeper and longer. And then as they go on the bend around, you see they get shorter. That's the idea. Now we get in his line here as well, his defining line down towards the front and you see the way it's much thicker then as well compared to the lines up there because it's giving a bit of depth to it same with these guys here nice and thick and these are little tricks you know that I'm telling you about little tricks that you can apply to any painting any painting of this style okay and then this is going to go out of the painting there is his line there and we have here we have just we get in his here back of his head, his neck, and around there again, just sort of, sorry, going over that a little bit more there because just to um, define it more. And you can put a tiny bit at this stage, it might be a bit dry, no it's not, but they, we'll go back over those areas with the beaks, and where it goes onto the orange as well. That'll all be fine, don't worry, on the night. Now we just want to delineate the feathers here in the background. The tail feathers, so we're bringing those down there like that. That's going to go in there, so there'll be only a tiny bit of blue there, visible. Both sides of that, yeah, that, that'll be dark blue. That's coming around there. It's going in there. That's going in there again. And then this line down here, and then you'll have the other line for the lower feather. And a tiny bit of blue peeping through. Okay, so it's all to do with shapes, unusual shapes, which makes this image quite quite interesting and fun. Okay, and then we have our other line down here, yeah, delineating that, and that's going in there. And there are basically all your lines, except can anyone see? Like we're more or less finishing it up now. I'm going to go back and obviously reinforce the colors again, all the lines or anything else that I see. But can anyone see what I've left out? Yeah, I can hear you, you're right, yeah. The eyes, we're gonna do a little line on the eyes. So we're gonna get a small, oh yeah, here we go. A little brush, a Kiko would be proud of me. And I'm gonna bring that up back up there again, because I want to lean on the edge of this. I don't want to touch the paint, because it's still wet. And just to show you, I'm gonna do a little delineation with a small brush, you know, this is a, sorry, a number two, yeah, did I say that? Number two. This is a big brush for Kiko. She prefers number ones and zero, 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 zero. She did her amazing paintings. Just amazing paintings. She's an amazing artist. Um, okay, now I'm gonna do a little delineation. I'm leaning on my hand around the edge of the eye because we don't need to have it as thick as the outer lines, okay? Can you see that? Good. Then all we're going to do is bring it to life. Just make it a little bit bigger. Well, what do you see? Look at that. He has an eye. He can go to Specsavers now. Okay, around here again, around the outer. I'm just steadying my hand with my other hand, with my left hand underneath, because I'm a right-handed artist, as I've told you before. But I can paint with my left hand as well. Um, we just do is a little bit off-center a bit, as if he's looking in a different direction. 
Okay, we can make this just a little bit wider, a little bit too thin. Okay, come around there like that. Lovely, that's all we want to do, just thicken it up a bit. And we'll go back over all of these, definitely. Look, one, two, this is the last die. As I said, I won't bore you by going over these lines again because that, that's just um, something you have to do, you know, to get the thickness and the, to get that uh, opaqueness into it. But you will be able to uh, look back over the videos, follow the suggestions that I've made and work from there yourself and then build it up, as I said, each layer. Now, can you see where we are now? Look, isn't that cool? So what do you think? I don't think there's anything else I can do with it. I think that's about it. And uh, I just want to thank Margaret for asking me to do it because I really enjoyed it. It's one of my funkiest funky roosters. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to go back over, reinforce the cobalt blue lines. Maybe reinforce a little bit of the red. Maybe put in a crescent moon up there or something because it was in the original. There's a moon in that as well. Let's see what I do when I get to it. But listen, if you enjoyed it and if you see it on YouTube, please give it a like and share it if you want. And it's on my website as well, nolanart.com. And uh, I'll be back soon with another video, another suggestion from Margaret, an abstract, which will take a little bit longer uh, because it's quite involved, abstract painting. But I'll just show you a few techniques. Okay, look, keep creating, enjoy yourselves, and have another cup of tea. See you soon. Thanks, bye.